Hello everybody, uh, my name is Greg Lickert. I am in the Neuroengineering group at the University of Missouri and today I'm going to go over how to set up some basic computer science -y tools for doing computational neuroscience. So we're, the first thing is installing Anaconda. To um, install Anaconda you can go to anaconda.org like here and you can go to download and you can just, I'm on a Mac right here, so I have the Mac installer and there'll be different ones for Windows or Linux. And you can download it and just install everything using um, default settings and stuff like that. Um, it's totally fine. And then once you have everything installed, you should have um, a new app or shortcut called the Avaconda Navigator. And this is kind of the easiest way to set up um, environments. For um, doing this kind of stuff, but um, you can also use the command line if you're more familiar with that. And you can, if you do a Google search for, it's called the Conda Cheat Sheet. This can give you all kinds of helpful commands to um, run and set things up on the command line, like creating an environment um, or doing some other things, installing packages using Anaconda, and um, it's a really good tool for managing environments. So once you have the Anaconda Navigator set up, you can um, go to the environments and then you can make new ones. These are all of my current environments that I have set up on my laptop, um, but you can make a new one by just going over here to create and then name the environment whatever you want. So like we'll call this example and you can pick which Python version you'd like. Um, for most of these tools, I would suggest using Python 3.7.13. It's kind of what we've um, found is the best for um, all these libraries I'm going to show to set up, like BMTK um, works pretty well in Python 3.7, so I'd recommend setting that up. And you can just hit create, and then it will load for a couple minutes, and then you'll get something like this um, on your um, on your screen, it will just say whatever you named it over here, and then you have a bunch of libraries that uh, Anaconda automatically installs. Um, so we give this a second to load, and then it can, it, depending on how big the library is, it would take longer to load. And then when you want to install a new package, you can go up here to this pa package search and search for one. So one that we're going to be installing is called Neuron. So if you would search Neuron, and click this little button. Sometimes it doesn't come up instantly. It says right here I'm searching my installed ones. If I go to all, this will, um, and then hit update, it will search all the like different uh, websites it has to find packages and we'll show you in, we'll, um, we'll find one. So we already have Neuron installed, but if we look at something like I don't have installed on this, like PyTorch, for example, just to show how you would install something you would click the little box right here, and then you'd hit apply, and it would download it. So on Mac computers like I'm on right now, um, the first thing we'll go over to how to install is Neuron, which is um, a Neuron, like it says Neuron, it's a Neuron simulator used to run these kind of computational uh, models. So on Mac, the install is pretty easy, and on Linux, you can just search Neuron, hit this box, and hit um, the apply like it was here. On Windows machines, the install is slightly different. Um, to do that, you can just go, um, it's not that hard, but it is slightly different. You can go to Neuron, the website is neuron.yale.edu, and you can go to download, and you can hit the pre-compiled installer, and then you can download the Windows install, run everything, you know, get the default um, kind of settings for that and everything should be fine for that. And if you have any problems, they have some troubleshooting guides right here for the Microsoft installers, um, but all that should be fine. And uh, the next thing we're gonna um, show how to install is going to be uh, Jupyter Notebooks. So what these are is, it's a very popular tool. It's um, a way to kind of combine like a Microsoft Word doc and code into one kind of fluid thing. So to do that, there's a couple different ways you can install it, either using the Anaconda Navigator like we showed here and searching for Jupyter. It's kind of spelled weird. It's spelled 
G-U-P-Y-T-E-R, not like the planet, but you can search there and install Jupyter and Jupyter Notebooks, which is the Jupyter kind of software that we'll be using. They have other ones as well. But another way to install it, and they have here, is using pip, and that's also how we're going to have to install some of these other packages that are a bit smaller, not on Anaconda. So I will demo how to do that as well. So on Mac, you can open up a terminal, and if you don't have it here in your window, you can search for it. And on Windows machines, you're going to have to um, open up a PowerShell, like the terminal equivalent, and you can go on it, and you can type clear to clear everything. And on Windows machines, actually, I misspoke. Instead of using the uh, Windows PowerShell, you should have a new thing um, called the Anaconda prompt that you're actually going to use instead. So not the Windows PowerShell, sorry. You want to use the uh, Anaconda prompt. And that's where you can type some of these commands that I'm going to show. So like it says here, pip install JupyterLab. So what you would do is just type pip install. Oh, um, on Mac, you can see here I have this base environment. Um, that will be automatically um, activated when you turn on your terminal. Instead, you're going to want to um, do a different command, and the same is on, uh, same is true on Windows and Linux. Is you do conda, and then we can see the names of my environments. If you do conda, um, env, and then list, so you should see the conda environment that you made here, the name of it, and you're going to want to use that when you do conda activate, and this basically just turns on that environment that you just made previously. So for us, let's say we called ours Neurolab, which is a, a one I have right here. So we do that. And we can see that now, instead of using the base environment, I'm using this Neurolab one. And we can hit clear to get rid of all this. And then in here is where, where we can um, do the pip install. So just do pip install Jupyter Lab. And if you hit enter, it will go through the install. Um, I'll just demo one here, it doesn't really matter. It will install everything, and you'll see a bunch of text flash on the screen. You don't have to really do anything. It will just install a bunch of stuff. Um, you might have to, it might come up like, um, you don't have to hit a Y, like yes, to install some stuff and then hit enter. But for the most part, it's pretty easy. And then that's kind of how you install stuff with pip. and. Not just these neuroscience tools, or Jupyter isn't really a neuroscience tool, it's just a general tool. But this is pretty much how all Python tools get installed, is either using pip or that Anaconda uh, navigator. So the next thing I'll show real quick how to install is BMTK. This is a uh, Python package that um, makes building neuro models um, a little bit easier. So to install it, very similar like we did the um oh my god to uh like very similar to how we install Jupyter we can see down here they have a pip install so just do pip install bmtk or you can see here you can use this conda install and do conda install c um and do all this and just paste this into the conda prompt and that will also work um but pip is also there and it's short of a command so I only prefer to just use that but either work fine and once you have uh, that installed, the same thing, you just go uh, make sure your environment that you made in Anaconda is activated, not the base one, that one we made with the Python 3.7, and then we've already put uh, Jupyter Lab in. Just do the pip install bmtk. And as a side note, um, there's lots of different versions of these packages. Um, my preferred version of bmtk currently, when this video is being made in September. 22nd of 2022. I like uh, 0 0.0.9. So that's how you can specify the package you want to install. And as of right now, I recommend doing the, uh, this version of the package, but um, you can really install any version and it might get away with it. But if you um, download a model and you see it's not really running correctly and the author of the model says it should run, then perhaps you should try switching versions, like backdating to a different version of the package, and then maybe that could work instead. And if you've already installed a package on um, using pip, 
you can do pip uninstall in the name of the package. So I'll go ahead here and uninstall BMTK just to demo it. And I can say here, yes, I want to remove it. And then to install, do pip install BMTK and whatever version we want to do. So this one again. And then everything's already downloaded for me because I guess I uninstalled it. So there we go. And the similar is true about the Anaconda Navigator. You can uninstall things in here as well. Pretty much um, a very similar way. Just click on it. And the last tool I'm going to go over to install an environment is this is called BM Tools. It's one that a PG student in my lab, Tyler Banks, made uh, with the help of some other students. And essentially, it's a way that if you make your models in BMDK, you can kind of look at, um, you can like analyze different statistics about how the network's connected and a lot of different things like that. And once again, you can do a pip install. So pip install BM tool. And it will go over um, you know, the same way as the other things. It will download everything it needs and automatically set it up correctly. And so hopefully if you did all that, your um, Python and your environment should all be set up and ready to run fine. And then uh, the next thing we'll go over is how to install what's called an IDE. It's essentially where you type code into. So the pretty much the kind of gold industry standard for IDE is one called VS Code. It's made by Microsoft. It's one of the, if not, I think the most well um, kind of used one in industry and um, it's just a very good tool and it's completely free and open source. That's always good. So you can download it from code.visualstudio.com. Make sure to download your right version, either Windows, Linux, or the Mac version. And once you install it, it will probably ask you maybe to log in with, um, you know, maybe like a Microsoft account or something like that. I set it up a little bit ago, so I don't exactly remember um, the setup, but you know, it's it's very simple. Um, and with all this stuff, you know, if you ever get stuck on something, um, Google's your best friend. And you know, all the things I've shown, you know, PIP, Anaconda, and you know, VS Code, Visual Studio Code. They're all really well known in industry. So, um, if I maybe didn't explain something as clearly as you'd like, you can uh, find it there, um, like on the web, and um, find another way to kind of get through it. So yeah, once you let's get rid of some of this. Once you um, download VS Code, when you pull it up, you should get something that looks somewhat similar to this. Um, you might not have anything recent or anything. You might have some tutorials. For how to go, how to use VS Code, which um, those can be helpful, um, especially maybe if you're not really familiar with how to use it. But um, you can always come back to those later. And the first thing I'd recommend doing in VS Code is going over here to the side. And if you don't have the side up here in the corner, they have this thing that toggles um, the side options and the done options down here in this other sidebar. Um, so just click that in case it doesn't pop up for some reason and you can click extensions. And then here you can search for different extensions on um, that like VS Code have. And the ones that I'd really recommend installing are first Python and PyLance. These will give you kind of um, autocomplete. Um, when you code, it will kind of recognize things and it will highlight your syntax all nicely. And then uh, I also um, installed Jupyter. Um, and this, if you just install Jupyter, these other random Jupyter um, kind of things were installed also, and that's really good. Um, you can do, um, you can work with Jupyter notebooks right in VS Code instead of having to maybe pull something up like Google Colab or um, start like a, a, a Jupyter kernel on your local machine. It still does all that, like it starts the kernel, but it will kind of do it um, all like automatically and everything will work nice. And then another thing that's really good is um, it's called SSH Remote. And um, this is something that I use and I'll go over in a little bit, but essentially allows you to SSH or basically like connect to a um, computer that's like not your local machine. And it's really popular in computational neuroscience to do this because our models take um, so long to run that using um, more powerful machines with you know higher uh, core count can then speed up the model. So 
but that's a tool I'll go over in a little bit and while you're at it you might as well install that so those should take a second to install and then when everything's good um, I'll go over an example of how we know everything is set up correctly and if everything is set up right on your machine so on oops on um, my github which is oops that's the wrong window sorry on my GitHub, which is just my name, Greg Lickert, I have this um, folder called Neuroscience Tutorials, and there's lots of different ones for different things. But right now, we're just going to try to run a BMTK model, a very simple one. And if all that runs correctly on your local machine, then you have everything set up right. So you can click right here to code and then download zip and then just put it wherever you want. And that way you can get to it in VS Code. So we'll go once you know mine's on the desktop right here so I'll go to open and then I'll browse to my desktop and I'll just go to neuroscience tutorials and just for what I'm gonna be at it's gonna be in BMTK models and I'll go ahead and click on this single cell clamped one and you can see this even though this is a notebook and normally if you click on this like without VS Code installed, your computer couldn't read it, but um, all this can kind of be um, like uh, VS Code can kind of handle everything and set everything nice. And the next thing we have to do is we have to set up our Python interpreter. Uh, interpreter. And what that is, is basically um, connecting the VS Code to that um, environment that we set up, the one where we installed Neuron and BMTK and BM tools and all that. So you can see up here, mine by default has set it up. But um, if you're new, you probably have one of these default ones down here that it um, automatically like VS Code made for you. And we don't want to use that just because it doesn't have any of the packages that uh, we just installed. So we can see here that the suggested one that's the one i've already used but if you haven't used it before you can browse and click on whatever you named it before and that would then use that environment and we can just go down here and we can click run all and you can see that ran correctly because there's a little check mark by it and everything is running fine that's because you know my environment um, is already set up my mod files down here um, have been compiled uh, correctly which is good um, sometimes you can and in this notebook there is a um, little tutorial over BMTK if you're not familiar with it you can read it and it says down here warning if you see this error you fail to compile um, mechanisms which is an issue that is kind of a particular thing that can happen on Neuron um, and on you can go on the Neuron website and you can see how to um, have um, mod files compiled but in this simulation if we go to our file explorer and we open up um, that folder you're in which is that BMTK models um, we'll go ahead and save that it's gonna open this up in a nice little folder and we can see that these this folder was just generated but our um, just for reference if you don't know where your mod files are at they're gonna be in sim chapter 01 components and then mechanisms and mod files. We can see here this was your, this file was generated, meaning our mod files are compiled. Uh, mod files compiling is um, the might be a different kind of a different way on um, on Windows machines. You might have an issue with that. Um, I just didn't write here in my Mac because those kind of play nice with um, an automatic um, mechanism compiler that is present um, on uh, BMTK. Sometimes the Windows machines don't work on that. But we can scroll down to what we just ran, and we can see our simulation results at the bottom of the notebook. And if you see these graphs and you see, you know, check marks by it when I run everything, um, I'll just let it run so you can see what, it make sure you know what it looks like when it ran right. Because these would be here, these are kind of saved outputs, so they'll already be in the notebook. So if you don't run it, um, it will be fine, but we can see here this was actually ran, it took 0.4 seconds, whatever, and there's a check mark by it, which means that this ran correctly. It found the output of the model and everything, so that means all that stuff is set up correctly, which is awesome. And you can also 
we go ahead and exit out of here, save the changes, sure. We can also, um, you know, run scripts um, in uh, VS Code. And I have another, just um, oops, another uh, short tutorial on my GitHub. This is called BMTK Tutorial 1. Um, it's just basically that same thing that I just ran, but I made it into um, a script. Here's a demo how to run scripts in this. So we can um, download this. Um, this is a different uh, folder than the other one. We can click here and download it, and then save it to wherever, and then go on VS Code and hit open. Go to, it's on my desktop, and it's right here. And then I can click this, if we look at the readme for this, it just says to run the BMTK model, just type python example.py. So on this, we can either hit the play button right here, and we can see down here that it's using my neuro lab, which is the one environment where I have BMTK and such installed. But if that doesn't come up, you can click down here and then click on it. Um, and if that still somehow doesn't work, you can Google something like how to set up an Anaconda environment in VS Code, and there'd be a nice post um, by someone who describes that, but that should all work fine. And if I hit this play button up here, my code uh, should run, and everything should pop up with a little graph right here. Let's give it a second. There it is. So that all worked fine, and that's kind of how you can run scripts in um, VS Code if you don't have a notebook or if you don't want to hit the play like you already know what the name of it is and you know it's fine and you don't look at the code you can come down here to the terminal and type Python and the name of it example.py and the same thing that just, happened, just came up or happened again so you can see here that also worked and did the same exact thing that I covered earlier so that's kind of um, how to set up VS Code pretty basically and how to kind of set up some uh, tools, you know, not only, that's not only how you install neuroscience tools, it's how you install kind of any Python package um, and how to set it up in VS Code and how that to work. Um, so now I'm gonna go over something else pretty briefly, just how to use that SSH remote tool that I was talking about earlier. Um, and this is a more kind of specific use case um, and um, yeah, I'll also be kind of directing this towards some of the students that might be in our lab who kind of need help setting this up. So um, the first thing you have to do, um, especially if you're um, a student in our lab and you're not on campus when you set this up or you're not in your company Wi-Fi or whatever, is you want to be on a VPN normally because these um, systems, like you need to be on kind of the, you know, for me I'm on the campus Wi-Fi and then I can access campus uh, local computers. So set up the, the VPN. Um, I'm on campus right now, so I don't have to do that. And then I can come down here to the open a remote window and connect to host. But um, if you go here, you're not going to have any hosts. Um, I have one already set up, but you could go to add new host. And it would be the command you do is well, actually, let's, I'll show you something a bit different. You can, I'll say open SSA configuration file. Um, this is my config, this um, one right here. And you can see here for that connection lab, this is my um, user, this is like my SSH for the lab. And this is my username that will be logged in. Port 22 is pretty standard. And then I have forward x11 and forward x11 trusted both as yes. These are things you just type into this. This wouldn't be here by default, any of this. And this allows you to um, be able to just search, like quickly um, find the lab like I did in my, um, when I clicked that as it says remote. And this forward x11, I'm not sure if this works on Windows, but it works on Mac to where I can send my, like I can set my display variable on the, um, computer I'm connecting to and it will then like basically um, send me like map plot graphs or stuff like that um, if that doesn't work on um, Windows machines or you have some issues with that um, I'll show you briefly how to counteract that so we're excited of this stuff and 
um, when I go to connect the host, all that is doing is um, using that host, you know, the host lab, that thing I just showed you in the config file. Um, you would place um, the username with like whatever your username is and, you know, whatever um, the um, address is with your actual computer address. That's the same for everyone um, in the lab. So like, oops. If I go back here, if I go, to, I'll just show the config one more time in case it wasn't clear. Host name, this would be the same for everyone. And then username is whatever your username is on like our lab server here at Mizzou. So like this is my Paul print is this, so that's what my username is. And the host name, this is our the like the um, address for our um, like uh, own little um, cluster. So if I go up hit connect lab it will ask me for a password for the lab so I'll go ahead and put that in and then I'm gonna go into this is my directory in the lab and I'm gonna look at this folder that I have um, already on the lab server if you don't have anything on there you can just hit OK right here and I'll just, I'll just show that instead and it might ask for my password a second time and now I'm connected onto the lab server and I can um, make changes to things on the lab server and run things and everything and it's basically like I'm, I'm you know I'm using the files on the lab server but I'm able to type things with um, my kind of fancy autocomplete that VS code has and all that um, and if you never ran anything on the lab server or it's been a second, just as a reminder, um, you want to type this, um, this command in order to activate the lab server environment. And then, you know, you could get clone and clone any kind of model repo that you're looking at and then can look at the files you have here. Um, and can then, you know, make changes to them or run them. And then when you're making a change to a uh, file, make sure that you, um, so right here, I'll just add a random print statement. Um, you can see here this little one. What that means is that you have one file that's unsaved at the moment. So if I ran this plot firing, it wouldn't print this high because it hasn't been saved yet. So then I have to hit, I hit, uh, Command S there or Control S on Windows, and that saves that file. Um, there's ways that you could um, just Google like how to set up auto saving on VS Code. So like when you type something, it would save it. But as of right now, I don't have that set up. So yeah, that's kind of um, basic thing of how you can kind of use this SSH remote and kind of save yourself a lot of time with um, messing around and not having to use something like Vim, which would be like what you normally would have to use on um, some kind of um, like cluster and um, if you're not familiar with anything or need a little refresher on how to use um, kind of the SSH um, like a remote uh, Linux uh, cluster like this is you can type SQ to look at who's on the queues so right now I'm running a job and um, you can submit things using batch commands so the, what you need to know is like s batch and then you have to make this batch file here so if we look at one just um, real quick we can see these are the parameters for the file um, and hopefully if you're starting out uh, and you're new in the lab someone else has already made the batch files um, and you just have to run them or down here you can um, run them using other like neuron commands or something um, but yeah that's um, kind of like a brief overview of how to get everything set up in the lab. Um, and if you need any help with anything, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you.